All right, so I'm gonna describe the old Bosch VE pump in a little bit more mechanical detail than you, you typically find in videos on YouTube. There's a ton of videos of people showing you how to, you know, adjust your your boost, uh, boost control systems, you know, and setting your quote unquote smoke screw in further, or, you know, you pull this out and you can adjust the star wheel for the rate, but, I'm going to actually explain physically what that does and why it increases your fuel and, and can increase horsepower as well. So I'm going to split this up into three portions. One's going to be the pump top, which uh, includes your, your throttle controls and uh, your, your boost fuel adding mechanism. Uh, it's up to the side. You've also got the body of the pump and then the actual fuel distribution and pumping mechanism in a block but for this video I'm just going to do the actual pump top and, and fuel and boost control system. So in all the videos that you see people are adjusting the smoke screw right here which is just a Torx bit and a lock nut on top of that and you can see this one here actually has already been basically fully adjusted all the way in. Uh, I'm you know I just don't drive like an idiot. Easier foot into the throttle don't just mash it to the floor every time otherwise that's gonna you know make your truck a lot smokier driving around town so you pull off four screws and uh what you actually see in here why that makes a difference adjusting that screw is because what it does is it pretensions this mechanism to start off a little bit lower so your zero boost throttle is going to start off lower and when this is lower it allows you to add more fuel so rather than you know some people will say this is a mechanism that adds fuel as you add boost but really this is a mechanism to limit your fuel based on your current boost um, and I'll, I'll get into the actual mechanism side of this in a future video that shows why I, I like to say that it limits your fuel but moving on, so you're going to, you know, pull this out. A lot of people will have videos where you pull this out and they'll show you if you actually look at this mechanism, it's not perfectly centered. So by just, you can actually see this little line there where mine has been rubbing. Um, and that's probably the narrowest side of it because it's not centered in the middle. It's uh, so simply by rotating this, you can for free, gain a little bit of additional fuel and a little bit of additional horsepower. So, covered the smoke screw in the top, why the smoke screw sets the pre-adjust. You're starting at a little bit further down on that ramp. Um, and when you're starting further down on that ramp, what you're doing is, way down inside of here, uh, right now it's in the off position here, I'll move it in. There's there we go. There's that little needle mechanism in there that runs along the profile of that. And so based on how far in it is, so the, the narrow portion would be like your full fuel portion of this, uh, based on how far in it is, you are allowed to add more fuel. So another super common thing is this star wheel in here. People will grab a flathead screwdriver and you know you can kind of turn that around and the reason that actually helps you is because you are detensioning this spring. So this is your return spring that basically under zero boost wants to return you to this all the way up position where you um, can't add more than a tiny bit of fuel basically. So by taking that star wheel and adjusting it all the way down, your spring rate is softer. So say at 10 PSI boost, you're allowed to add 5% more fuel. Um, it's not a, not really a significant amount, honestly. When I did that, I didn't really notice much of a difference. Um, overall, between the smoke screw and that, it's noticeable, but it's not like a crazy large amount. Um, so another question I had when I was messing with this was, you know, you can buy different versions of these, 
when I first saw this, I was like, you know, why would I go spend money on a new one of these that has a different profile when you can just use the most aggressive ramp rate on here? I always wondered this, and I never actually knew, but can you actually get more maximum fuel purchasing those other ones, or is it kind of a gimmick? And there legitimately, mechanically, is reason why buying one of those could increase your max fuel. And I'll show you why. So, oh, also, right now, this will not go all the way in. It won't go down because that little sliding mechanism down there is all the way in. So I'm gonna just take it, push it back over. Also, this fuel pump is garbage. So I'm handling this like trash because I don't care about it. It's just gonna get thrown away. It had metal shrapnel in it. Uh, so with that pin all the way over, looking at the bottom side, this is what actually rotates. Right now we're in the absolute minimum amount of fuel. So you were only allowed this much fuel travel right now in your inside pumping mechanism. But to, to show why I believe that you could add more maximum horsepower by having a different profile, we'll take this and I'll put this all the way in. Shoot, I think that uh, might have pushed the pin in. Yeah, I did. There we go. So now I'm. This is all the way down. I didn't put the spring in it so that I can easily just push it all the way down. This is like an assuming absolute maximum boost. So boost comes in through the manifold to here, goes in through that hole there, and then your positive pressure pushes this down. We're in a full boost scenario. And I have to hold that up. This mechanism here, this is, you can kind of see now, actually has more total travel than it did the last time I had this down here. It's still not a lot um, because you have a like mechanical advantage arm based on distance travel. Anyways, if you look way down in there, you can see you're not actually getting all the way to the end. Even with that diaphragm pushed all the way to the max boost position, this mechanism is not allowed to go all the way to the end. So now I'll pull this diaphragm all the way out, which is gonna be kind of annoying now with that, uh, now that I've pushed the screw all the way in. I'm gonna have to use both hands to do this. Please don't ever treat your fuel pump like this. Like I said, I'm literally just doing this for demonstration purposes and my own learning purposes. All right, so pulled this back out. Um, and now with nothing in there, nothing to stop that, that little, uh, I don't know, sliding piece to go all the way in, we'll look at the same portion here. Now, we are able to push this all the way to there. So you could get, absolutely could get more travel by allowing that mechanism to go in even further than this allows you, even when you were turned all the way to the best cam profile. So yes, replacing this will allow you to have more maximum fuel for more maximum flow. Um, one last thing I'm going to cover is the actual throttle control and your governor spring. So your, your, your throttle cable arm here would be bolted onto here and rotates this mechanism from the spline. Sometimes these can get leaky, so when you take this off, watch out because there's actually seals in there. And uh, this one actually right before it died, started leaking a tiny, tiny bit. I drip, drip every once in a while from there. But here's your governor's spring right here. And when you push the throttle in your, in your truck, like you push the pedal down, you are physically rotating this, and all it's doing is pulling this spring on a mechanism in here. 
So that'll be in the next video, um, kind of explaining that interaction. But So your throttle is not actually hard cable moving butterflies like it would be in like a carbureted engine. When you're pushing the throttle, all you're doing is pulling this spring, which moves this over here. But you also have the fuel shutoff valve here. So when you rotate this, that interacts with this arm right here and kills the fuel. So that's a mechanical fuel kill. You can put a cable on this to shut it off. If you have a situation where um, you've adjusted this screw here, which is another common one to do for fuel modifications, you've got to kind of, there's a little collar on here from the factory, you have to cut that collar off, loosen the jam nut, and then you can screw it in. Some people say like two, two and a half turns or so. I think I did two and a quarter. But they say to watch out for your truck running away because even at zero throttle, this sets your weights at a point where it can run away and it that'd be bad for you because then your governor's spring can't stop it from hitting its rev limiter. But this mechanical cable here will shut the fuel off. So if you're adjusting this mechanism, yeah, sure, have a board with your buddy or whatever to cover the intake, but also this will shut your fuel off if it starts to run away from messing with that. And uh, what else can I cover? Oh, the, the reason that this does increase your maximum fuel is because this actually rubs on this mechanism over here. So that's where this actually physically interacts, and I'll cover that again in the video where I'm talking about the actual pump body next. Alright, so that's, that's video one.